In the name of Jesus, dear Christian friends, in God's Word today, we're going to talk about waiting. You see, everybody's waiting. It's just that Jesus reminds us today that not everyone is waiting well. That is to say, not everybody even knows what they're waiting for. I mean, there's some waiting that we do every day that's obvious. We wait in traffic, we wait in grocery stores, we wait for trains. But not everyone knows that they're waiting for Jesus to come again at the end of time. In the Bible, it says that we live in the in-between times. In between the time Jesus came the first time at Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, and that unknown time when Jesus will come back again. And right now, Jesus says, we live in those in-between times. And in the Gospel today from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, Jesus says, It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching and ready when he comes. Like I said, the whole world is waiting. It's just that not everyone knows what they're waiting for. All of us have to wait for Jesus to come again, whether we realize it or not. He's going to come at a time of his choosing. And the question for me is, will I wait well? It's your question, too. Are you waiting well for Jesus to return again? As he always does, Jesus, the master teacher, takes something very important for us to think about and tells us in very practical terms what this means for us in our everyday lives. He's going to paint a number of pictures for us with words And as he does, two themes are going to emerge from Jesus' words. If you're waiting well, you'll be ready when he comes. And secondly, you'll also be faithfully serving him. Well, the first thing about waiting well, Jesus says, is that you're ready. Be dressed and ready for service, Jesus says, and keep your lamps burning. Again, Jesus paints a number of word pictures here in our text about being ready and waiting well. Here's two pictures right off the bat in the very same verse. In verse 35, it says, Be dressed and ready, and keep your lamps burning. And one word really captures the thought of both pictures. Anticipate. It's be dressed and ready for service, Jesus says. I don't know if you're one of those who's never given up on the King James Version. Maybe you still read that translation of the Bible. If you remember the way that verse was worded here, it's quite different. Verse 35 in the King James, instead of being dressed and ready for service, it said here, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. It's it's kind of weird when you hear that old Elizabethan language Um, What it was all about was the way that in Jesus' day they wore robes. Um, Your cloak ran down past your knees. And if you wanted to run away from someone or, or get somewhere or run towards someone in a hurry, you wrapped up that cloak above your knees so that you could run. Um, You women who've ever needed to move quickly when you had a dress on, you know what this is all about. Um... You gird up your loins so that you can be ready to go and move about. You you get the picture. It's about readiness. The other picture is keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Now back in Jesus' day, they didn't have street lights or electricity, obviously. So just like ushers in our church might keep our lamps trimmed and, and ready for services here, um, or if you're expecting company at your house today, you you leave a lamp burning. You leave the the front porch light on. Again, you're ready for someone to come. Simple little pictures that Jesus uses here. And what's the point? Jesus is trying to get us to anticipate his return. He's saying expect it. And I want you to live your life in in such a way that shows that you're really expecting me to come at any moment. And, and when he tells us that he could come any time, it, it doesn't mean that he wants us to be afraid, but he just wants us to be ready. Ready when he keeps that promise to come back again and take us to be with him so that we may be where he is in heaven. So again, the question for me and for you today is, are you waiting well? 
As a pastor, sometimes I visit people in the recovery room at the hospital, and it might be a member who hasn't been coming very often to church, and reflecting on the health scare they had, they sometimes themselves will say, Pastor, I suppose the good Lord is giving me a wake-up call, isn't he? Now, one fellow I remember recently even said, he's giving me a good swift kick in the butt is what he's doing. Waiting well. It's about waiting for the Lord in the readiness of faith. Keep listening to Jesus as he paints a few more word pictures for us. Verse 36 through 38. Like servants waiting for their master return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. It's another part of being ready for Jesus' coming shows in this way, he says, you're faithfully serving him. Are you like that servant, Jesus says, who's waiting for his master's return? Because weddings in those days lasted for days, the servant could not know precisely when the master would return, whether that was going to be during the second watch of the night or the third watch of the night. Everyone needs to be ready for the master's return. Of course, the master is Jesus. And discipleship according to Jesus is depicted as servanthood. And notice right away there in in verse 37 how The roles are reversed in that section. It's the master who returns, but then he himself takes on the role of the servant, and he serves those who are at the table. What what a beautiful picture of the way Jesus came, and he became that suffering servant for us. Jesus took on human flesh as a little babe at Bethlehem. He dressed himself for service. He took on a human body so that he could walk and talk and teach and preach. He showed acts of compassion in his miracles. He took that body all the way to the cross. He was obedient unto death, even death on the cross. And as that suffering servant, he laid down his life for all of us to wipe away all of our sin and guilt. It's in response to all of that that we as the servants of the Lord want to be ready in faith, waiting for him, faithfully serving as we wait, using our time, talents, and treasures to serve him in ways that please him. And so, in other words, when we think about the time that God's given us on this earth, we don't just waste it or we don't just use it any old way we want to. We ask the Lord, what would you have me do as I'm on this earth? How can I help fulfill your saving purposes in my life and be a part of your saving mission? When it comes to our treasures and our money, do we say, it's my money and I earned it, so I'm going to spend it any way that I want to, which is a purely pagan and ungodly thought to have? Or are you saying, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me all my life with the ability to work and to have these things and to be able to save in retirement even? What do you want me to do with my wealth, Jesus? When it comes to waiting for Jesus to return, part of waiting well is serving him faithfully. God gives us all unique abilities and talents, spiritual gifts, passions. The believer who's waiting well, says, Lord, what do you want me to do with my mind and all my abilities? Is how can I use my life in order to serve you and others um, and, and continue to be a part of your kingdom work? All of this, of course, depends on who the master really is to us in the first place. Verse 40, the last verse of our text, is really a key verse. Jesus says, you also must be ready because the Son of Man, 
will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man. That name was a special way of referring to himself. It was a name that Jesus used because in his Bible, the Old Testament, Son of Man was a title for the Messiah, the one the prophets promised would come, our Savior. He's God who became a man to serve and save us. So Jesus uses this word in a way to show us that he's the one that, that we need to be saved from our sins and to go to heaven. He's the one who will come to earth, he says. The Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. The first time Jesus said he came, it was to establish his kingdom and to bring forgiveness to all the world. His kingdom was near, he said, because I'm bringing you the kingdom. By my life and by my death and resurrection, the kingdom of God had come near. But at the end of time, Jesus says he's going to come with his kingdom once again. This time, not as a suffering servant, but in glory, with all of the hosts of heaven and with a trumpet blast in all of his glory, everyone will see him. Every knee will bow, and the kingdom of heaven will come, and together it will wrap up with the kingdom of earth in obvious and glorious fashion. Jesus is coming. Are you ready for his coming? He says he'll come like a thief in the night, that is, in an unexpected time. And he doesn't want us to be afraid about, you know, when he'll come or if we'll be ready. He just tells us it will be at an unknown time so that we will be ready whenever he comes. There's a passage in the Bible that really sums up a lot of what we've been hearing Jesus teach us about this morning. It's from Hebrews chapter 10. I'm sure it's a verse you remember. Jesus there through the writer to the Hebrews says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And he said, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Again, serving him with the readiness of faith. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Are you waiting well, dear friends? As we continue to gather like this around his word and together at church, around his word and sacraments, we hear and learn what God has to say to us about our salvation and about how to thank him with our service. May the Lord continue to work through his word and sacraments to keep your lamp of faith burning brightly. May you, by the Spirit's power, be dressed and ready in faith while you're waiting serving him with your time, talents, and treasures faithfully, so that more and more people like you and me will be found waiting well when he returns. Amen.